Hey, welcome to Screech House. I'm Seb. Let's find out what are the best FL Studio plugins for beginners. I will tell you exactly which plugins I recommend and why you can benefit from them when you're new to FL Studio. So pay close attention, watch until the end and let's jump straight in. When I was in your shoes and just started making my own beats in FL Studio, I had absolutely no idea what the heck I was doing. I was already happy that I figured out how to add an instrument to the channel rack and how to produce a basic sound. However, I realized that FL Studio came with dozens of plugins and they all seemed to work differently somehow. And this confused me, I had no idea where to start, let alone figure out what I must learn first to get the most bang for my buck. That's why to spare you having to go through all this, let me share my top 3 FL Studio stock plugins you can immediately start with as a beginner. Each of these so-called VST plugins are easy to learn, but they also form an essential foundation if you want to become a great music producer. To keep it simple, we will only talk about synthesizer plugins you can add to the channel rack. Though I will not include complicated or overwhelming synthesizers on this list. Think about Harmer, Harmless or Citrus. They are absolutely awesome tools and definitely worth your time, but quite intimidating to start with. Furthermore, I'm also not going to explain how to add plugins to the channel rack or how to start making beats and melodies. That is way outside the scope of today's video. But if you want to learn more about start making music in FL Studio, get my book The FL Studio Beginner's Guide. Many people have successfully followed it and I highly recommend getting your copy as well. I'll put a link in the description below so you can start straight away. Pause the video if needed, but now let's find out what are the top 3 best FL Studio plugins for beginners. That is according to my opinion. 3. Minisynth Minisynth, as the name suggests, is kind of a stripped down version of a full featured synthesizer. But surprisingly it is still quite complete and very effective. That makes it an excellent plugin to start with as a beginner. Furthermore, Minisynth has an intuitive graphical layout with different tabs. And each tab allows you to control different parts such as the oscillator, filter and LFO. However, it never gets too busy or overwhelming, which again makes it the perfect place to start. Lastly, Minisynth is a lightweight subtractive synthesizer and this is a form of synthesis that is arguably the easiest to learn. Moreover, subtractive synthesis basically forms the foundation of sound design, which you simply must know as an ambitious music producer. So if you have to start somewhere, Minisynth is one of the places to be. The layout is clear, the complexity is limited, and you automatically pick up on the essential basics of sound design. That's a winner in my book. Simsynth. Simsynth is another lightweight FL Studio plugin that is very easy to master. In fact, it is probably the simplest synthesizer on this list as it only has a few vital functions. So if we talk about the essential foundation of sound design, this may well be a winner. Nonetheless, don't underestimate its power. Regardless of its limitations, Simsynth still provides the core settings and does it very well. You have three dynamic oscillators to your proposal, a filter, envelopes and an LFO. This is all you really need to get started. Now on top of that, there's an incredibly simple layout which makes it almost impossible to get lost. And when you have less to work with, it's harder to make mistakes and much easier to master and get good results. So less is definitely more when it comes to Simpsons. One thing Simpson doesn't provide are special effects such as reverb delay, chorus or flanger. Though this isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I would argue it is actually beneficial because it makes matters much less complicated. Moreover, there's always the mixer in FL Studio. The mixer is where you can add effects to any instrument you want, thus there's absolutely no necessity to have it included on your synthesizer. So all in all, Simpson is a classic minimalistic synthesizer which you can quickly understand without any prior experience and it produces an authentic powerful sound that you can achieve rapidly once you get started. 
This should sound as music to the ears of any beginner. Before I reveal the number one plugin on this list, can you do me a favor? Can you share this video to anyone who might have interest in it? And this way we can help more people and at the same time grow the channel. So if you please, click the share button below this video and let's throw it out there. I would definitely appreciate that a lot. Now without further ado, let's see which FL Studio Stock plugin takes the number one spot. 1. 3x Ask the 3x Ask, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the best Apple Studio plugins for beginners. Granted, it may be slightly less minimalistic than the other two, but easily makes up for that by giving you more flexibility. And by having more flexibility, there are simply more ways to create a wider variety of sounds. But in this case, without any real drawbacks, as it still provides an easy interface. Just like SimSynth, the 3x Ask has three unique oscillators, but the real difference is made when you look closely to the other tabs. For example, on the envelope tab you can create different types of sound movements and use unique filtering options. On the miscellaneous tab, you even have an arpeggiator at your disposal and the fetch unison mode. And this makes the 3x ask a dangerous secret weapon that most people don't know about. While it can unleash true power, the 3 xl still has a simple design, no overcomplications and, just like the others on this list, uses the subtractive form of synthesis. Therefore by starting with it, you will naturally gain the fundamental skills you need if you want to become a successful music producer. Now last but not least, the 3 xl loads very quickly, barely demands any resources and is easy to navigate. And that makes the 3 xl so convenient that if you watch most of my videos, you will see it still making an appearance on almost every occasion. And that is coming from an EDM producer with more than 50 years of experience. It is such a simple tool, yet more than powerful enough to get the job done. Therefore an outstanding starting point for any beginner. So Minisynth, Simsynth and the 3x Ask are all superior plugins for FL Studio beginners. Not necessarily because they are better, but simply because they are easier to learn and master. You will get good results much more quickly and prevent yourself from being overwhelmed or paralyzed by complexity. Something you definitely want to avoid as a novice. As a bonus, all the knowledge and experience you gain from this, you will bring with you for the rest of your life. And this can come in handy when you decide to push it to the next level and explore more advanced synthesizers. So now that you know where to start, it will also help a great deal if you already know how your synthesizer works. This will spare you a huge amount of time as you don't need to figure out every knob and button by yourself. That's why if you want to make your own sounds quickly, start now with the sound design for beginners guide. This is another unique guide I've written that explains in full detail how each setting on your synthesizer works. So I highly recommend starting here, as well as the Apple Studio Beginners Guide that I mentioned earlier. I'll put the links to both guides in the description below, so check them out. Now let it be helpful and don't forget to tap the subscribe button right now so we can meet again in the next video. And this is a form of synthesis that is arguably, 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 that's fucking hard to pronounce, arguably the easiest to learn. <laughs>